Okay, so supposedly my voice is working better, but not much better. It's all the ways to go. Uh, and of course, you have a torturous real analysis class to look forward to. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna finish we have a break today. Yeah, he's giving us a break today because I said something about it. We were all like, like what break? Like sleeping. 10 oh, we just, yeah, he I said, just did that. Yeah, you, know, you did. did like six fifteen. Yeah, it's you like, it's you tough. and Kane <laughs> two people live. Oh. Yeah, and Amber D was at the end. She was just like, they don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so you have to give a break or it'll be a revolt. Um, okay. Well. I wasn't jumping into anything. I didn't point anywhere. At the end of class, he was like, oh, we're all very tired. I was like, yeah, how about a break next time? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, the thing is, they tell you, uh, those who are experts on uh, how, how students function in classrooms. You lose focus after, like, 50 minutes. Uh, or, or not even that. Like, uh, yeah. you see a really good break even after 30 or so. Uh, that I want your attention to tell That means we deserve three breaks. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, not happening. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, but all I'm going to do is get through this one and a half pages of notes, however long it takes, and then we're done. Because I feel like crap. Um, <laughs> I got a headache, so I'm okay. um, So we're still in section 5.2 of transforming system to E. And today, the point is to look at certain specific transformations. Like the form, the straight recordings, right? Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, polar coordinates. So the idea is you have um, x prime, y prime, the original system, and so Taking this as a vector is big X of X and Y. And so that's the system you're given, and you want to go over to another system, R prime, beta prime, some other vector field, which I'll call Y, of R data. Now, um, so the idea, so the question is. What is Y? In terms of x. Now, from a general discussion, oh, I hate my voice cracks. That was not so stupid. Um, anyway, from our general discussion from last time, we have a way of expressing big Y in terms of big X, because big Y is the push forward of big X, which is F prime of F inverse of. In this case, our um, okay notation check. Um, at the inverse of R and theta um, times big X of F inverse of R and theta. Okay, um, so. So really what we need to do is <coughs> to transform our system, we need to express x and y in terms of r and theta, but we know how to do that. Um, and uh, we need this Jacobian matrix. So here I've written this f and f inverse, but what are they in this case? Now we can get specific with f and f inverse. Those are transformations between Cartesian uh, polar coordinates. So for a conversion, we have R and theta is f of x and y. Um, and um, but because it's polar coordinates and we're familiar with that, we can write out what it is. So what is R in terms of x and y? Square root of x squared plus minus root. Yeah. Oh, you're thinking of the other way. Yeah. yeah. And we'll need that too. Okay, and then what about theta? Yeah, yeah, it's our tangent of of y over x. Okay, um, 
So that's f. And now f inverse, so x and y is f inverse of r and theta, and that is your sine and cosine. Yeah, r sine, r cosine theta and r sine theta. Okay. <coughs> so Okay, you're gonna re rewrite this. This I'll keep the same. Okay. Um, well, actually, okay. Then we have big X. A big X is a function of X and Y, but we're gonna fill in what X and Y are in terms of polar coordinates. So that'll be R cosine theta. R sine theta. Okay. Um. <clears throat> now, um, so what is this? F prime. F prime is the Jacobian matrix. So in other words, it's the first partial derivatives. So that would be um, dr dx, dr d theta, uh, sorry, dr dy, d theta dx, d theta dy. Um, so we take the partial derivatives of these functions right here, but we would substitute in x is r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, and that gives us what we're looking for. <coughs> okay. So, here's what we could do. The straightforward way, conceptually, of doing this is, here's our r, here's our theta. We just take partial derivatives of these, respect to x and y, and fill those in, and then we're done. Um, but if you look at these functions here of x and y, as opposed to these functions of r and theta, which ones would you ever differentiate? R cosine theta. Definitely these. So here's what we'll do. So, so instead of computing that directly, sometimes, like in this case, it's easier to uh, go the other way. Especially if you're only dealing with uh, two by two. Actually, you're gonna, for benefit of video watchers, I'll just leave it up for a few seconds. Because um, <clears throat> what we could do is, um, for, for convenience, I'll write the F inverse, we think of it as G of R and theta. So what we could do is, Instead of computing the Jacobian of f, we can compute the Jacobian of g and invert it. So in other words, the Jacobian matrix of f inverse is the same as the Jacobian of f inverted. So it doesn't matter whether we take a Jacobian inverse first or invert to take a Jacobian. It all works out the same. Now... In this case, um, what we really want is a Jacobian of f. So I can invert both sides of this and say the Jacobian of f, which is what I'm after, is Jacobian of f inverse inverted. Now, it seems kind of strange that this is easier than this, but in this case, it is. Um, and I'll show you that. Um, now, any questions about this relationship? Um, Uh, 
Um, actually, I'm going to take a moment to explain, because it's not really necessarily obvious why. It doesn't matter whether you take a Jacobian. Um, like here you're taking inverse first and then taking a Jacobian. Here you're taking Jacobian first and taking inverse. Why? It doesn't matter. Um, because <coughs> um, here's why. I'm going to actually show, dude, what I'm saying is the inverse of this matrix is this matrix right here. So, um, so the Jacobian of F inverse so my claim that I made without really justifying it is that these two are the same. Okay. Now, this is, so um, we're actually going to mix a bit of linear algebra and calculus right here, which is something I always like to do. So this is true if and only if Jacobian of inverse times the Jacobian of f is equal to the identity matrix. Because all I've done is I've taken this and moved it to the other side. Now, <coughs> when you take the Jacob two Jacobian matrices and multiply them together, um, what I'm doing is this is actually the chain rule in reverse. A product of Jacobian matrices is a Jacobian of a composition of functions. So, because when you have a Jacobian of a composition, I think chain rule. You have a derivative of f of g. What is that? It's a derivative of f times a derivative of g. So multiplication of derivatives, doesn't matter whether they're ordinary derivatives or, or uh, Jacobian matrices, is still a derivative or Jacobian of a composition. But what is f inverse of f of x? x? X. f and f inverse cancel each other out. So this is a Jacobian of the identity function, if you will. So identity of x equals x. What's well, the Jacobian of the identity function? It's the identity matrix. Um, so that's why this is true. That the Jacobian of inverse is the inverse of a Jacobian of f. OK. Um, so, so I'm using that over here for this example back in polar coordinates. I want the Jacobian of f the same as the Jacobian of g inverse because g is that inverse. Okay, so g of r theta is r cosine theta r sine theta. Now, g prime will be Jacobian matrix. So this is this is x and this is y. So my partial derivatives are <coughs> derivative of x with respect to r, x with respect to theta, y with respect to r, and y with respect to theta. So these functions, easy ones to differentiate. So what are the partial derivatives that should go in here? In that column, you get sine theta. Uh, yep. Those are the easy ones. By the way, anyone else is welcome to yell out answers too. I'm Can just you give our sine theta? Sorry, what? Wait. Which one are we doing now? Okay. What was that? Now we're going to this called derivatives so perspective. Negative r sine theta? Yeah. And then r cosine theta. Yeah, r cosine theta. Okay. So now we have g I prime. Yeah. Well, <laughs> good. Because I'm about to tell Abdul to hold off so he gets someone else a chance. <laughs> I know, it's good that you answer so many questions, but I want other people to move forward. Really want other people to step up. <laughs> no, I see, I see wrong answers. I, 
Um, well, actually, signals the right answer. I'm right. right too slow. I was still okay. writing the previous <laughs> matrix down. All right. So now we want to call of f. We want the inverse of this. So the inverse of this matrix, um, which would be f prime of r cosine theta and r sine theta, which is what we would need to push forward. Um, what is the formula for the inverse of a 2 by 2? What's the first thing you need? 1 over the determinant. determinant. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, what is the determinant of this matrix? R? R? Yes. Because it's r cosine squared plus r sine squared cosine plus sine squared equals 1. So we get 1 over r up front. And then what do we put in here? Uh, r cosine theta. Mm -hmm. And then flip the cosine theta. Yeah, you switch the diagonal entries. R sine R theta and negative And negate the off diagonal entries. OK. Um, so now we have our Jacobian of f evaluated at R cosine theta and R sine theta. Uh, whereas before we had to differentiate that square root function and our tangent to be a lot of algebraic manipulations, now we don't need to do um, any of that. Um, okay, so now we can take this and put this back in our um, our push forward operator to define the new system in uh, polar coordinates. <coughs> That's the, actually the only one to erase part of this. Uh, yes. So you're going to put R uh, in well, the So you're going to get <coughs> cosine theta, sine theta, those things over R. Yeah. So the thing is, normally the Jacobian of F is a function of X and Y. But we want it plugged in as X is our cosine theta, Y is our sine theta. And that did all of that for us. Right. Yeah. Um, so now we can go back over here. Okay. Um, so now we know what this is. Um, so I can say x prime, y prime satisfies this system if and only if um, the vector r prime data prime is equal to that matrix, which would be, I'll simplify it, cosine theta, sine theta, minus sine theta over r, cosine theta over r. So that matrix times the vector big X of r <coughs> cosine theta, r sine theta. Because this is matrix vector multiplication to give you a vector, and that's equal to r prime, beta prime. So all of this right here is the pull, push forward of big X of our theta, which is our vector field big Y of our theta. So now we know, given any system in Cartesian coordinates, here's how you express it, equivalent system in polar coordinates. I was thinking that if my, as long as my voice is in the state, maybe you could try to sound like Christian Bale's Batman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah whose voice actually the movies annoyed the shit out of me. I, I love the movies, but him talking like that. Just, yeah. There you go, Brian Adams. No. Brian Adams doesn't have a voice. No, it's not nice to that. <laughs> I was always offended when they would refer to him as a Canadian Bruce Springsteen. I've seen Springsteen in concert three times. No. <laughs> are you saying that Springsteen better? There is no comparison. Wait, are you Springsteen better or Brian Adams? Oh my god. Springsteen. <laughs> Springsteen. <laughs> Brian Adams is pop. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, Yo, you right. just like made your way up. I was too young for Springsteen. Okay. Like, he's good. Dude, no, that was the first concert I ever went to was for Springsteen. Um, the funny thing was. Well, so, um, I was, Springsteen's drummer, Max Weinberg, 
well, was on the uh, Conan and Brian show for a long time as a drummer there. But now and then he would need to take time off to tour with Springsteen. And some other performers for NBC were offended by that thing. Well, he gets to take off for six months from his show. Why can't, if I want to make a movie or something, why can't NBC let me off from my show? And so NBC, to be fair to everybody, made what's called a Springsteen rule. If Bruce Springsteen himself invited any performer at NBC to go on tour with him for six months, <laughs> they'd allow it. So, <laughs> That's great. I have because on Spring, uh, Brian is a bigger star, sort of, or no, a bigger star. Not not in this apartment or in other places than Springsteen, so I've heard about Brian Adams before. No. Oh. Oh. I oh. Oh. No. 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 It's like. So, it's like Justin Bieber and that, you know. But yeah. I want, yeah. Oh my God. No, no, Justin. Oh, so bad. I'd say it would. Where did you get? That was a strange thing. Brian Adams is just like Justin Bieber. Well, he is Canadian. How about? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that did that off the top of my head. I really think he's a great guy. Anything is indestructible around you. <laughs> Even our legs. Well, especially you yourself. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's polar coordinates. Now, so now let's take a look at spherical coordinates. Um, so I'm going to find so the conversion for if we're going from spherical to uh, Cartesian, so I'll call that G of Rho, theta, and V. I don't suppose anybody remembers the formulas for spherical coordinates. Yeah. This is physics, so no. Um, well, actually it's not quite physics, it's physics. They switched the theta and V, which made teaching DE2. Pain in the butt? Yes. That like accommodated their convention, because the book uses their, their convention. So we're all mathematicians here, so forget all that. Um, so it's rho uh, sine phi cosine theta, rho sine phi sine theta, and rho, rho, rho cosine phi. Okay, so that's going one way. And then the other way is, uh, keep one by R, rho theta and phi is equal to big F of x, y, z. So, Rho is square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And then we have arc tangent of y over x. And then our cosine of z over. And I'm going to write rho just because we know what rho is. And I don't feel like writing out that thing square root again. Um, but I have it written out in full notes. Wait, it's supposed to be the square root of another? Yeah, square root of It's supposed to be that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Really, it should write as a function of only x, y, and z, but you get the idea. Okay, so g and f are inverses of each other. Okay, so, <clears throat> so what we can do is, if we wanted to, to find the push forward of any vector field x um, through this transformation, we uh, again, just like in the previous example, we need a Jacobian of f. Um, so, um, so push forward vector field is f prime of g of um, rho theta v times big X of g of rho theta v. So now we just need this. So we're going to find that to be um, if we take g prime of rho theta v and then invert it. Um, then we can go ahead and uh, then, then that'll give us that part. 
And again, that's going to be easier with dealing with differentiating the square roots and arc tangents and arc cosines and doing all the algebra that goes with it. Except this is going to be a 3 by 3, so that's going to be a bit more mature. So, so first we need this uh, g prime. So we're going to be differentiating all of these. So this is x, y, and z. So we need g prime. So we're going to differentiate x with respect to all of these. Rho, theta, and v. And then y in the second row with respect to all of these. And then z in the third row with respect to all of these variables. z, not y. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're so generous. Um, Thank you, Abdullah. <laughs> he's going to keep quiet. You guys are going to fill He's going to let the room. Oh, that means he doesn't feel like doing it. No, I can't. <laughs> or that. Okay, whatever. Somebody fill this in. So differentiating x. I just how much you're writing those down. Yeah, I'm still writing. Well, it's time to be Hey, take your time. <laughs> okay, we can do the four course column easily, like sine, cosine, theta. Yeah, you're writing it. No, sine. What? Sine, phi, cosine, theta. Oh, I thought you said sine, phi, sine, theta, and that's why I was like, no. Okay. So the first column would be sine theta. Because the second column is sine theta, sine theta, right? No, no, no. The second column is different. Second, okay. X in terms of theta. No, I mean, I mean, not column. Sorry, bro. Second entry. Yeah. Entry, yeah. Of the first column. Yes. Yeah. We're differentiating that top <laughs> left. No, I'm that one. Wait, wait, wait. Which which one are we differentiating with respect to row? That top left one there, where it says the. Yeah, top yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, this for first row. That for second. That it for would third. just be. Sign, phi, cosine, theta. Right? Yeah. You said yeah. five. I said five. Yes. Yeah. 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 I was like, still wanting to see. Where? Second row. Down. 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 So I did that one, okay. and you guys have fun. All right, so we're doing that first one. So the one, and the other one okay. is okay. negative uh, sine, uh, row, sine, phi, no, no, yeah, no, sine, no, row, sine, phi, sine, theta. Say it, go again. Negative row, sine, phi, sine, theta. No, sine, theta, because it's, it's. I said sine. Yeah. I said sine the first time. First time, yeah. Well, I meant sine. <laughs> okay. okay. Don't ask me to say it more than once, or I'm going to get tongue tied. So it's going to be rho, rho sine, phi, sine, sine, yeah. sine, cosine, theta. Crap, I didn't leave enough room to write this. Crap. And that's going to be zero. Yeah, because there's no theta at all in z. Yeah, so at least there's one easy one. Um, okay, rho, cosine, cosine, phi, cosine, cosine theta. theta. All right, phi, phi. Wait, what did you write? Rho, cosine, theta, sine? No, cosine, theta, sine, theta. Yep. And they aren't really hard. It Negative just takes way too freaking long to write out. Yeah. Negative rho, sine, theta. Negative rho, sine, theta. Did you say? Phi, phi. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. Okay. Phi, phi. Cosine. So then that. We're asked to very one yelling on answers. <laughs> Is everybody on board? Nope. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, now, the hard part. Um, and this is why I went into this some on Monday, um, how we invert uh, matrices like this. Um, so the most practical way, still kind of tedious, and that is to... Um, these formulas I gave will be inverse in terms of uh, determinants. Okay. But it'll be a lot of simplifying due to like, cosine squared plus sine squared equals one and so on. Okay.
So, uh, so G prime inverse would okay. give us F prime will be one over determinant of G prime um, <laughs> times the aggregate of G prime, but That's going to be a transpose of the cofactor um, matrix. So Cij is going to be minus 1 to the i plus j times the determinant of g prime with Rho i column j removed. Okay. Um, so in other words, there are going to be 10 determinants in total that we're computing. One is a 3 by 3, and then the other 9 are going to be 2 by 2s. At least, there's not much work involved in both. Okay. <laughs> um, now, for the um, Determinant of uh, G prime, and actually I'm not sure how much time I'm going to spend doing this, because I have the whole thing written out my notes, but I obviously don't want to go all the way to 445, or your guys' brains will fry. Um, okay, so, um, so what you can do, the easiest way to take a determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix Um, always, well, yeah, as long as you get the sign pattern right, um, actually, if you're using the third row, um, yeah, you wouldn't have to change sign. So, because what you can do is, how you're normally taught to do these determinants for larger than two by two, is you like, go across the first row and uh, delete that row of whatever column, take a two by two determinant. But you can expand along any row or column as long as you account for any sign changes. Now, in this case, um, if you use the bottom row, since this is a 3 by 3, um, I believe you would not sure. have to change sign. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, another way you can do a 3 by 3 determinant. Oh, the shortcut way? You go diagonal? Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you do the diagonal. That's actually what I was going to do, yeah. is use a diagonal. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah, do all the let's do that. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay. So that only works with 3 by 3, right? Yeah, only yes, three only three by three. But either way, it's, uh, it's faster. Super fast. <laughs> so I guess you could call this what I'm doing here a writing intensive approach. Um, because I need to write out the matrix and then. Repeat the um, first two columns. Okay. So then repeat the first column. Diagonals here, here, and then here, and you multiply those out and you add those, and then you draw these diagonals here, here, and here, and you subtract those, and that's your determinant. Now, in this case, because of that lovely zero at the bottom, two of these diagonals we don't have to worry about. So we just have four all together. So the determinant is going to be product of all of these entries. So that's going to be 
rho squared, like Negative minus rho squared, rho squared, sine, squared. Uh, sine cubed, for the sine of each one, times oh, cosine squared. Uh, so that's this diagonal. And the second diagonal is minus rho squared sine phi cosine squared phi times sine squared theta. Okay. Um, and then this diagonal is zero because there's a zero there. And then for diagonals going the other way, we subtract. So we get minus this one. So that's rho squared cosine squared phi sine phi cosine squared theta. Actually, I'm going to write the sine first just so we can see better how to simplify. Okay, cosine squared theta. And then we finally have that's zero. And then this diagonal is going to be minus rho squared sine, sine cubed phi sine squared theta. Sine squared theta. Mm -hmm. OK. So that's your determinant. <coughs> but now we should try to simplify it. And how can we do that? Can you take rho squared out of everything? Um, Maybe rho squared. We yeah, can. Negative rho squared. And probably sine. And a sine. Sine phi. Yeah. Sine phi is the um, Yeah. Uh, sine phi we can take out. And look, okay, so minus rho squared sine phi. Now let's see what's left. We have sine squared sine phi squared cosine squared plus cosine squared phi sine squared theta plus cosine squared phi cosine squared theta plus sine squared phi sine squared theta. Oh, they go to one. Because? Yes. Yes. Because if you look here, we have, um, OK. If I take the first term and the third term. Group them again. They both have cosine squared theta. Sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi. So these two. Sum to one. Uh, no, we don't. We no. sum to cosine squared theta. Right. Yeah. And These two yes. um, have sine squared theta in common. You have cosine squared phi and sine squared phi. So these two combine to sine squared theta. But then you add all of those together and you get one. So yeah, everything in square brackets becomes one. You get minus rho squared sine phi, which you may recognize as when you're doing the integral in spherical coordinates, that is the um, x will move out to minus. That's the extra factor you have to put in. That's a Jacobian for change of variable spherical coordinates. Just like r is what you have for uh, polar is cylindrical uh, coordinates. Okay. So questions about the determinant of that mess. Okay. So, so that's going to be sitting on the outside um, while we handle the um, adjugate um, matrix. So we have all these um, two by two determinants to compute. <coughs> what a mess that will be. Maybe we won't take a time to do all of them necessarily. We'll see how it goes. Well, actually, I do have our stuff in my notes. So maybe we'll do all of it, but just enough so you can See a process or carry it on yourself. A homework problem. <clears throat> okay. So, um, oops, 
cofactor matrix. Um, okay, so just for easy reference, I'll write out G prime here. Thus, we taking elements from that to uh, we're doing two by two determinants. matrix, I'll fill out C right here. Um, now I'm going to put in the sign pattern. You have a minus 1 to the i plus j. So when i plus j is odd, you're going to have a minus. So that means here, 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 and here. These four elements um, have to be negated once we get to determine from up here. Okay, so for this first element, the one, one element, you delete the first row and first column. So you focus on only what's down here. So um, what is that determinant? Negative phi square sine phi sine theta cos theta. Um, I repeat that? Negative phi square uh, sine no, negative row square, sine phi, sine, oh. Sine squared phi. Cool. Yeah, sine squared phi. That's sine squared phi, root phi okay. is theta. So we have minus row squared, <coughs> sine squared phi, or phi, whatever. You really should pick some weird letters that don't look so much alike. Yeah, like Oh, which ones? I'm just saying, like, phi the, the phi and the theta look alike, so no. when you look at them, you write the correct one, yeah. when you go to say it, you say the wrong one. Just because they look alike. Okay, well, I'm, this is a convention, I'm sorry. I know, I'm just, I just, it wasn't against you. No, I'm just I saying think they Rowan look Rowan Fee looks more alike than Fee and Fee. But, like, they all look so much alike, so when you go to Sam, you just think you write a long one. That's all. Okay. Well, I'm not sure if I agree with your contention that the theta and phi look alike, because phi is a big old vertical line for it. Well, I know. Like, when you go to write them fast, sometimes yeah. you slant okay. your letters. Skim over it. Oh, well. Anyway. Okay. So that's that entry. Um, you go to the next one. You remove the still first row, second column. So now it's B's four that you have to deal with. So you're, you're striking out the first row and the middle column. And... Um, what was that going to give you? Negative rho sine square phi times sine theta minus negative uh, minus rho cosine square phi times sine theta. Which okay, is, but how does that simplify? Take the sine theta, uh, rho sine theta. Uh, yeah, rho sine because theta. sine squared phi and cosine squared phi equal one. Oh yeah, minus minus, yeah. So we're going to have rule sine theta? Yes. Uh, so the two minuses cancel each other out because this entry gets negated. So it's rho sine theta. That happens in a lot of these where we get that simplification. Um, oh, wait. Um, yeah, that's just rho. Something seems off here, one second. I don't know if it's in my notes or in something else. Because, yeah, there's only a single factor of rho. Oh, gotcha. Okay. I forgot that after we do all this, we have to take the transpose. Okay. So here, first row, strike out the third column. 
and we're gonna get negative rho sine phi cosine theta cosine phi. Rho sine phi. Um, cosine theta cosine, cosine theta, theta cosine theta. Two cosines. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so then the pattern just so you can keep filling in uh, from there. And um, so, if, so then you move to the second row, you strike on the second row. Um, in this case, the um, second row, first column, and you just have these guys. Negative root squared phi. Negative root squared. Squared. Sine squared. Sine squared phi. Sine theta. Evidently, negative stays. And you strike out the second row, second column, and you have of your four corner elements, um, and it's going to be a minus negative um, row cosine theta. Um, yes, because you have minus row sine squared phi cosine, and then cosine row squared phi cosine. cosine squared phi cosine. Again, so cosine squared phi plus sine squared phi plus one, so it's row. Cosine theta. Um, Is it a negative row? Um, negative yeah. row, yeah. Yeah, the minus, yeah. Um, okay. Um, and then finally, uh, second row, strike the row sine third column. So row it's sine these so um, Yeah, so minus x plus, so you have, well, you minus up front. And you have rho, sine phi, cosine phi, sine phi. Okay. Um, that's. Okay. All right. Um, no, those are wrong. Okay. Um, finally, strike the third row. Um, First column, so it's all these guys, and there's going to be a lot of simplification involved. You're going to have row squared. Um, you have sine squared theta here, mm -hmm. cosine squared theta, theta here. So negative row squared sine phi cosine phi. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then this entry, strike a third row, second column, so it's these guys, and again, there's going to be that simplification. Nope. Um, oh, wait. No. Nope. No? What's going to happen? It's going to be a long one. You think so? It's going to be zero. Okay. Yes, it is oh, going yeah, to be zero. Because yeah. you have sine phi, cosine phi, sine theta, cosine theta, and again here, just Same it's thing. differently. So it's zero. That's welcome event. Uh, and finally, strike the third row, third column, and you get this. Where there's going to be the usual simplification. Cosine squared theta, sine squared theta. Um, so you're going to have you rho sine squared phi. Sine squared phi. Oh, phi. Phi, phi. Phi. Yes. And I meant phi, and somehow wrote theta. I hate when it happens. Um, okay. <coughs> so that is your, um, your, your uh, no. um, that is your cofactor matrix. Now, now we have to take the transpose of that and then divide it by the determinant we got earlier, which is uh, minus rho squared sine phi. So g prime inverse um, is going to be, okay, so to get our first column, we're actually going to take our first row, and we're going to divide this by minus row squared sine phi. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have uh, sine phi, oh, sine phi, cosine theta, um, and then we have, um, okay, we're going to be using the first row to fill in the first column over here. So we're going to have uh, sine minus sine theta over rho sine phi. Um, yep. Okay. And then we have
have this. Uh, minus is canceled, so we're going to have cosine phi, cosine theta. Sine phi is canceled, and it's going to be over rho. Okay. Um, fill the second column, we use a second row. So we have uh, minus and row squared cancel. We're going to have a sine phi, sine theta, sine theta. yep. Uh, then we're going to have um, cosine theta over rho sine phi. Okay. And then we're going to have minuses cancel, so we're going to have over rho and sine phi cancels, and we have cosine phi sine theta. Um, and then fill in the third column using the third row, the elementary zero, and we have uh, cosine phi and um, sine sin phi, phi, sin phi and minus sine phi. Over row. Uh, yes, because there's only one row there. Okay, so that is the dang inverse. Well, that was fun. Um, what? Bad Felicia. All right. Money. <laughs> now, um, I mean, actually, we'll want to stop soon. So, um, okay. Um, now, because this inverse is pretty complicated, you basically you'd be multiplying this inverse by your original vector field with x, y, and z replaced by their expressions in empirical coordinates. So, matrix vector multiplication. But, um, there's a proposition, which actually, as one of the homework problems I have you guys prove, using this inverse, that for systems in x, y, z of a certain form, you get something very simple. Given functions, doesn't matter what they are. Um, so, if your system in XYZ happens to have this magical form, not sure when this would happen, but I guess it's one of those fun things to prove. Um, well, you guys can tell me it's your homework problem. Um, So this system, for, for whatever A, B, and C you have, is equivalent to this system for your spherical coordinates. So rho prime just becomes A of rho times rho. Uh, 
beta prime is just equal to b, and phi prime is equal to c times rho sine phi. Okay, um, so basically what you'd be doing is, uh, so you have a homework problem to prove this proposition, um, and the way you do that is it's just writing out what is the push forward of this vector field. So but now what is the push forward? It's the original vector field times the Jacobian of f, which is the, well, it's written over there. So you take that Jacobian times this vector field and make you carry out the matrix vector multiplication, express everything in <coughs> spherical coordinates and simplify as much as you can, and it should reduce to this. So it would be the push forward of that matrix, x prime, y prime, z prime. Yes. Times the Jacobian. Yeah, so you, multiply, so you multiply this vector field. Right. This is a vector um, on the left by that matrix. Right. Um, because this is f prime of f inverse of rho theta b, um, which is the first ingredient of your push forward. Actually, I'll tilt this so you can. Yeah. So. So this matrix times the vector field of your original system should give you, after simplifying and expressing everything in spherical coordinates, getting rid of x, y, z altogether, should give you that nice, simple vector field um, as a result. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, of course, this is chapter five. You still have chapter four homework to do. Uh, so, um, well, this, okay, I guess two of you have turned us in? Okay. Uh, that's probably three. I know, I know, yeah, but the two, two of you have turned, and you turned in chapter three. Yeah, along yeah. with like all the two days. Yeah, so the rest of you awesome. guys. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Most of you went well, to Atlanta, I told you to hold off, so, or I said you could, so that's partially my fault. Um, I'll try and like, turn in chapter four and five before Thanksgiving. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like that. Because then I have a paper to write, and then there's like another chance. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So then, um, uh, what was I going to say? Okay. Um, I have a couple of notes, a couple more examples to do for um, based on this proposition, like certain specific cases of given A, B, and C, and how you can understand what the solutions look like by converting to spherical coordinates. But you guys have analysis in a few minutes, so I'll just do those on Monday before jumping into the final section of this chapter 5.3. Um, so, okay, so at least you guys can have a break. Sure. 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 What? Oh. At least in break. So, okay. So, that'll do it. <sighs> What? I said I figured out one. I think the fine there are similar in the Because we're writing it. Wait, wait. Oh. You write here so that it's your face so that it finishes like Yeah. I don't. I write mine differently. And so, like, I write mine when I'm fine with it. I write mine the same. It's the time when it's a little. And so, I'm literally I'm the same way. Oh, okay. Except I didn't even know. I was like, I'm going to make more now. And I connect my face.